sky. It's a bird. No, it's a plane. No, it's Superman! Greetings and salutations all you friends and family, fans and followers of the Zeta Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for joining us here for our very special Superman-themed episode 60 of The Revolution. I am your host with the most from the east to the west coast, like peanut butter on your breakfast toast, Emperor Zeta. Coming to you from the Fortress of Solitude here in Etobicoke, Ontario. Canada. So this week, as I said, we have a very special Superman themed episode. First off, we have the final part of our live performance from the Drop Dead Pinups, along with commentary from their lead singer, Prince Alexander, and their lead guitarist, Sir Mark Zenko. We also have a trip down to see Man of Steel for the premiere show. We have a preview and a review of that for you. As well as during comic book day, Fred and Rob both get in on the action by having Superman themed commentary for their segments. We have a packed full episode, so I don't want to take too much of your time. So anyways, that is enough from me. Let's get on with the show. Rock and roll and up, up and away, baby. And here we go. Anthony is five months old now. He loves to laugh. That's why she only looks at his puppet's face. And as you can see, his hands are always in his mouth. I'm part of teething, which I wish he would cut his first tooth already. I'm getting impatient. Um, 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 um. He laughs a lot more, and he's very sturdy on his feet. Look, you can almost stand. You're going to be running in no time. Oh my goodness, I'm in trouble already. He is definitely more, getting more interactive and he likes to play. He's getting more full use of, of his hands. He's discovering his hands and what his toes are for. He's just awesome. He loves his sister. It's crazy. Oh man, he is constantly seeking her attention. If she's on the move, he's staring at her. If she's sitting on the couch in front of him, he's staring at her. If she makes noises at him, he laughs so hard when when she interacts with him. We had our second year anniversary. I'm going to the spa. That was my gift. I'm going to the spa at the old mill on Wednesday. I am very looking forward to it. I probably won't come home. It is payback, WWE's brand new pay-per-view. So we start out with Sheamus versus Damian Sandow. They built it up pretty good for a pre-show match, but I still think Sheamus is going to take this one because WWE is hell-bent on pushing Sheamus as a face, even though we all know that he works better as a heel. Then there is a three-way dance between The Miz, Wade Barrett, and Curtis Axel, the perfect son. I hope WWE continues the strong push of Curtis Axel and has him walk out with the IC title. Then we have the Divas match, or as I like to call it, the bathroom break match. Even though it is AJ and Caitlyn fighting for the title, I have a feeling AJ is going to win and walk out with the Divas championship. Her and Ziggler can be the ultimate power couple because Ziggler is going to be facing ADR for the World Heavyweight title and anybody who thinks that Ziggler is not walking out with the belt when he's really only held it for a few weeks, you're cracked. There's no way they're going to give ADR the title. We also have a US title match between one member of the Shield and Dean Ambrose versus one member of, of the former Team Hell No in Kane. The only way I see Kane winning this match is if it's by DQ because the rest of the Shield gets involved. Or Daniel Bryan comes out to help him and costs him the match. Yes! 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 Speaking of the rest of the Shield, Rollins and Reigns have a tag team title match against the newly crowned Team RK No in Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. 
Daniel Bryan has been on an incredible hot streak. He has been the best thing about Raw the past few weeks, the number one worker in the company, but I still don't see him and Randy Orton winning. And I see Randy Orton taking the pinfall so that Daniel Bryan can go on to say how he's not the weak link. Then we have possibly the most anticipated match of the night, the return of the straight edge superstar, CM Punk versus Y2J Chris Jericho. There is no way to bring Punk back in Chicago as a heel. He will come out to probably the biggest face pop of the night. One, Punk doesn't even show up and Heyman sub substitutes in either Brock Lesnar or hopefully the new IC champion, Kurt a Curtis Axel. The second possible outcome is halfway through the match, Punk just gets sick of wrestling and just walks out of the ring. But a third possible outcome is that CM Punk comes back, dominates Jericho, goes on to win in his hometown, and gets the biggest pop of the night. We, we, more. We, we, more. Then the main event. A three stages of hell match for the WWE Championship, with John Cena putting his title up on the line, against a monster known as Ryback. Now the three stages of hell, I think Cena's gonna take the first stage, which is a lumberjack match. I think Ryback's gonna take the second stage, which is the tables match. And I think ultimately Cena will win with the ambulance match in the third stage. One thing I know that is guaranteed for the pay-per-view is that Zack Ryder is not booked, at least not for the pay-per-view. He is, however, one of the lumberjacks, and he showed what kind of lumberjack he's gonna be on Raw, during the brawl when he just sat there at ringside while half of the other lumberjacks jumped in. And that unfortunately was Zack Ryder's Ryder's only appearance on the two major shows this week. No Raw, no SmackDown. But he did get back on his show, Superstars. Where he jobbed out to Heath Slater. Really? Ryder's back jobbing to 3MB? I don't know why they cannot give him a sustained push. It may have to do with him giving Fandango a concussion. I guess Vince is pissed that Zack Ryder hurt his pet project. I am serious, bro! Maybe this will mean a feud for Zack Ryder with Fandango when he comes back. Even though the Ryder's already lost to him twice. I bet he's just hoping and praying that his contract comes up soon. So he can leave and try and make it down to TNA. Bye. Great, he snores just like his mommy. Clap, 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 clap. Yay! Yeah, there you go. Thank you, my puppy. Chug, 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 chug. He's sitting up all by himself.
call it here. Woo! I think it was awesome. It's good. Yeah, it's good. First show back with Alex. Melted faces with boredom. It's fun. Out of breath. Where you going? Probably recording in September. Do you have anything to say Watch to your new tunes. Fans. Maybe be done by December, January. And young I say y'all. Look at it in my machine. And the cooking machine. Even you can get strawberry shortcake. It's giving! You know it's giving! You know it's giving! Look, Papa! Mommy, what's happening? Oh, no, 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 Orkles, gray, and ponytail. Mommy did the ponytail. Cheek! And um, one day I want to be a firefighter and a doctor. Thank you. I'm Edmund Owen and my name is Timmy. This new baby in the market, and this little piggy stay home. And this oh. little piggy. Oh! Okay. Hey, Alan. Ice cream! And this little piggy hard and run. And this little piggy run. <laughs> okay, Well, hello people, we are down here at the Queensway Cinema for a special movie review. We are going to see the premiere show of Man of Steel. So hopefully this will be better than the last Superman movie that they made. But then again, it really can't get any worse than Brendan Ruth as Superman. I am kind of iffy because there is Kevin Costner and Russell Crowe both in the same movie and I hate them both. I think they're terrible, especially Kevin Costner. Nothing bombs a movie like Kevin Costner. We're gonna get your preview and a review and we will see you inside the theater. Special Man of Steel 3D glasses. How awesome is that? Awesome. Fortress of Solitude. accelerated the process of implosion planning. Right? This fountain has been dispensed. Questions raised by my rescuer's existence are frightening to contemplate. I can't print this low. She might have been using it half of them. You're much than I never could imagine. Mm -hmm. The whole world has seen that. The ship appears to have inserted itself into a new synchronous orbit. Don't play games with me, General. Hi. Uh, my name is Dr. Emil Hill. There are cards on the table here, General. You're scared of me because you can't control me. You don't. You do. Krypton lives again. What happens to Earth? The foundation has to be built on something.
So we just got out of Man of Steel, and it was a fantastic movie. Although I do see the fanboys on the internet having a serious issue with it. It totally changed the continuity. There's no Jimmy Olsen, no Lex Luthor, and Perry White is black now. Not to mention that Lois was a redhead. Plus, there was no mention of Kryptonite, and Lois knows Superman's identity, his real identity. She finds out he's Clark Kent in the first movie. Well, where's the te sexual tension then with the fact that Lois is in love with Superman and couldn't care sh two shits about Clark Kent? Incredibly well done. The special effects were beautiful. Superman was played perfectly. They cast it unbelievably well. It was so much better than the Brendan Ruth piece of crap. There has to be a sequel. There just has to be. Because you gotta have some Lex Luthor. Any true comic book fan has to check it out. Hello, people! That's right. Comic book day! We're on our way down to Excalibur Comics. So, we're gonna go down there. We're gonna see the Prophet and the Expert. We have the entire Fantastic Four headed down there today. Myself and Catherine, Magda and our little monkey who is in the stroller snoring at the moment. And we're going to see Big Mike down there and find out how he feels about the Bruins winning and going to the Stanley Cup. So we will... See you soon, people. And Jasmine's already halfway up the stairs before we even got close. We ran into Gary on the way here. So we are back down here at Stellar Comics as every Wednesday. Headed upstairs with the stroller up the... That's right, the Steps of Doom. So we'll see you guys inside. This is Excalibur Comics, 3030 Blur Street West, upstairs above the Kingsway Theater. Start off with one of my favorite titles right now, and that is the Wolverine, the uh, new Wolverine series. Now, what I enjoy about this is our, our good friend Alan Davis. This is the last part of the issue part of that he's worked on, and he's going to take a break. But with issue eight, he'll be back. So I'm looking forward to have Alan Davis return because you know, to me, he's one of the best artists in comics, and I enjoy his work uh, quite a bit. Other ones that we're going to bring up with them, Guardians of the Galaxy, with our little buddy here, Rocket Raccoon who is the best character in the whole comic book. Just kidding. Just kidding. Groot is. Groot's the best character in the comic book, damn it. Groot! Anyone you know, you know, a monster named Groot, you know, from the early 60s and they decide they're going to put him in the book, hey, it's okay with me. Then we can recommend this book, Superman Unchained. Basically, we're getting Jim Lee on the Superman book, and of course, Again, a superb artist now. Not been a big fan of lately because his work it doesn't is nowhere near as the other stuff, the original stuff they did before. But it's Jim Lee. He's doing Superman. Need we say more? The only thing, the only problem I've got is the book. It has a little bit with the blue problem when you pull up the the fold out. It's actually blue to the damn thing. So you gotta be careful with this little sticky stuff for four ninety nine. Eh? That's why. Batman so, Year I mean, Zero, could be a good thing Scott Snyder was one of the better writers on, on the, the, the DC titles, plus okay, uh, Greg Capullo, who was uh, on uh, Spawn for a long, long time, well, this looks like another interesting storyline, so it will look worthwhile to check out as well, so I'm recommending Batman Year Zero Year, okay? It's a four book, always beautiful artwork on that one. And a great series storyline is going to continue on that, so I would recommend that you pick up the Thor as well. It's nicely done. There was a convention this weekend at Niagara Falls. No mention whatsoever on space. Come on. You can't be mentioned that on your show? No. Apparently not. I'm looking at the newspaper today and it's talking about a guy named Snowden. He used to work for the National Security Agency, the NSA. They are similar to the CIA, but even higher up in the, the ranks. Apparently this person who used to work in the CIA, he came up with a plan that the NSA were doing. They were taking everything you were saying on the internet as well as a ton of Google, Facebook, anything you were on electronic, they were actually recording every single thing, every single conversation. Uh, this guy has revealed that the NSA has been doing this for many years now. We, we of course, already knew that. I mean, every new computer, every new TV they built today, they have a monitor and uh, a camera and a, a, a microphone listening and doing everything. And like last week, we talked about the Xbox One. 
they can even pick up who's in the room by just their, their the way they move or the way they sound. And Homeland Security says they know where everybody is, 98% uh, of the Americans, because of their cell phones. So we all monitored 24-7, yet we think the internet was built for freedom or whatever, but it's actually built for surveillance. See, remember, you got to recall who built the uh, internet. It's the military, and they didn't build it for us to use uh, for fun. They built it to use to monitor us and to, uh, to actually see what we're saying, what we're doing, and, and everything. Uh, the other thing is, I guess Superman's coming out uh, on Friday, and if you probably listen to Spaceman this weekend, or perhaps the weekend after, he will show you that actually Superman is the Antichrist, a person who came from another planet. His name is Jael, and the L represents God. These gods come to Earth, just like in the Bible, the Nephilim who came to Earth and, and ruled mankind through their offspring and so forth. They fell in love with the women who, in this case, would be Lewis Wayne. All their offsprings became the rulers and the, uh, the famous actors and super actresses of, of mankind. Him, Andrew Jolie, Celine Dion, the Queen of England, and so forth. They're all, apparently, some people believe, the offspring of the Nephilim, uh, the line of King, who was the uh, offspring of the and the serpent in the Garden of Eden. So, if you're interested, check Spaceman on, uh, I believe, Saturday, 8 p.m. Hey, over with us. Check the Superman's Mike. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for our Superman-themed episode of the Zeta Nation. Thank you for joining us here for another week of the Revolution, and come back next week for a brand new episode right here on YouTube. Go back and check out all of my other episodes right here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, One Word, Emperor Zeta, right here on YouTube. Pick up your Drop Dead Pinups Electric Night CD. Check them out on iTunes and follow them on Twitter at Drop Dead Pinups. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Emperor Zeta. Head down to Excalibur Comics for all of your comic book related needs. To all you true comic book fans, you must head down and see The Man of Steel. And I'm a five time, five time, five time, five time, five time WCW champion.